So here we are on day two of the International 3414 Industrial Project. Was unable to remove the engine through the frame on the front here, as originally it looked to be possible. Turns out it is not. The front mount goes into that pinhole. Yes. All right, you guys can see that pin. And that would sit inside there, and there's just no way to take that out without removing this front section of the loader frame. That has to come ahead, or the tractor has to come back out. Either way, I uh, brought the frame ahead where I could, back the tractor back out from underneath it. In order to do that, one needs to make a jack plate that goes here. So I built that. Use that to support the bell housing. So you pull the engine and everything out of inside of this frame. The whole works comes right out. And in order to take the engine off here, you have to remove hydraulic lines. Remove the hydraulic tank because there's two bolts for the bell housing that live down in here. At the top of the bell housing. Then after that, it's just a matter of basically taking everything off. I mean, there's a little bit here and there. But nothing real major. Um, the biggest challenge what we faced tearing this apart was actually over there on the loader frame itself, right here. The fenders, which are heading over here, had four bolts. I'll show you the plates that they were in. This is the bottom side. You can see there was actually four holes. <coughs> they were in there in such a way I had to torch them off. Unfortunately, there was no way to heat them or get a wrench on them real good. They were frozen. They're really good So both sides got cut off and I'll have to drill them out and retap those not the end of the world, but Not exactly uh, fun and easy That's probably the worst thing about taking this apart was that particular moment Just dealing with that everything else is went pretty smooth um I'll be honest with you, I could have tried it, and I didn't have it in there at the time, but I probably could have backed the back of this tractor out of here with the starter. It went so so precisely and smooth. Uh, didn't really have to do much wiggling or much changing of things, so. But, yeah, that is where we are. The next thing I will do is get parts ordered for the clutch, pressure plate, send out the flywheel. That was froze on there really good. Took a little bit to get that apart. I'll give you guys a picture of this, or a view of this. That is our flywheel. It will need to be resurfaced. Spring gear is good. The clutch we will be replacing. Could we reuse it? Yes, we could. But we're in this deep. There's no point in not putting things together correctly. And of course, we'll get a brand new pressure plate. I don't know if you guys can see the inside bell housing a little bit. Right there, pretty good picture of the throwout bearing. It seems to be okay, it's fairly smooth, but we'll be getting a new one. Um, I'll be getting a new rear main seal, as I believe that is leaking. Now is the time to take care of that. Uh, amongst a bunch of other little piddly things, you know, pieces of hose and whatnot that connect pipes and new filters. Change out a few things that are uh, due to be changed at this point. And after that, the next project will be to pull this cover off and look at the high-low. We have an issue. It's stuck in high. Will not shift. Well, you can shift to low, but it does not work. Um, in the process, the owner trying to free up the clutch again. Somehow or another, he damaged something internally. I think probably just the shift fork. But we will see once we get into that. I will update you guys when I have more. Um, thank you for watching.